I have bought so many new parts for my fire damaged, stolen and crashed Audi TTS. You may remember in the last video that we completely stripped out the interior to get rid of all of the damaged parts, which looked something like this. We managed to get a key made and also get it started. <laughs> yes. But while it's fresh in my mind, I need to start rebuilding that interior. So I've been and bought all of this. In the back of my van currently, we have nearly a complete interior for an Audi TT, but I've gone for something slightly different than what actually came in the car. We'll come back to those differences a little later, but the first thing that I want to do is get the headliner back in and get that all cleaned up, but I want to make a slight modification to that before I do. This is my new headliner, and even though it's already black where the old one was cream, I'm going to try and add another level of luxury to it. I thought it makes sense while the headliner is out the car to you know, modify it and make it slightly my own, so I had all of this four-way stretch Alcantara left over from my project on the van, so it may as well get used upon this. So I guess it just goes to show I cannot leave a car alone. I have well and truly caught the bug. As I already mentioned, I use this material to trim the back of my van and I was so impressed with it, I thought I may as well do the headlining on the TT while it's out of the car. I've done this a few times now and I think I've really nailed the process, so I'm going to leave the links for all of the stuff that I use in the description in case you want to do yours too. But it's a very, very simple job. You've just got to spray both sides with contact adhesive so the headliner you're trimming and the material and then stick it on and work it into place. It does make a massive difference though using a four-way stretch material over a standard one because it just makes it conform to the shape of the headliner so much easier. Also, using a material with a foam backing like this one, they are available with or without, but I think the foam backing is the one to go for because it gives a little bit more plushness to the material, makes it a bit softer, and also as well is going to make it just hide imperfections ever so slightly that bit better. Once I got it stretched over the majority of the headline, it was then time to tuck the edges. So again, using the contact adhesive, and then just stretching it over that edge just to make sure I can get a nice clean line to cut to. The back of the headliner has not got to be perfect. All you've got to make sure is that the material is stuck down properly. That's it. I thought I may as well also do the A-pillar trims. These are a little bit trickier in terms of actually getting the material on and stretched around the corners, but obviously with it being a smaller surface area, it didn't take as long as a headliner. But this is just one of those details that makes the inside of a car so much more unique and just that little bit more luxurious, and it's well worth doing, especially if you've already got them off. How much better does that look? It just it feels so much more luxurious than just a standard black headliner and it just makes it that little bit different. And also, this would be a great option if you had damage that you wanted to hide on a headliner, like a small fag burn or something like that, because hiding damage on something like this isn't really a problem, but if you were buying a car with hidden damage, that's a different story. And this is where Car Vertical comes into play, who conveniently have sponsored today's video. <gasps> it's so important when buying any used car to get the car's history checked to make sure that it hasn't got a checkered pass like my Audi TT. Let's take this BMW M3 for example. You can see it's got a green tick for mileage, a green tick for theft, an amber light for accidents and a green tick for no outstanding finance. It's also had a number plate change which you may remember also helped me find the original owner of my Audi TT. And the mileage graph all lines up, there's no unexpected dips in it. But when we get down to the damage report we can see that the car is a category S write-off and we can also see the date which that happened. And even further down we can even see some photos of the car after the accident and we can see straight away that this car has been in a nasty accident and is definitely Definitely one to avoid. If you hadn't have done this report and just seen these photos from when the car has been repaired, you wouldn't have a clue. The last thing you want to do is go and buy a car which you think is immaculate, but get it home and realise that it has hidden history. That could be previous accident damage or mileage changes or even outstanding finance. So when you do come to buy a new used car or if you just want to check the one that you've already got, make sure you use my link in the description or in the pinned comment and discount code CHRIS to save yourself 10%. Let's get back to the video. Ah, I've just noticed that we've got a crack in the windscreen from the top here all the way down to the bottom so that's probably something that I need to fix which is lucky because we've got Archie here from AGM windscreens and he's gonna fix that for me 
it's probably a handy thing that we're changing the windscreen because there's a certain bit of the dash which isn't accessible with the screen in so it gives me the opportunity to clean that bit while the screen's out but Archie from AGM is a good friend of mine and also a good friend of the channel seeing as he did the windscreen on the BMW 2 so make sure you go and pop him a follow on Instagram whether you're local to Leicester or not to show him some support but if you are local to Leicester when you do need a screen if it's now or in the future make sure you go and hit him up so as quick as a flash he got the old screen out and cleaned up the surface where the new screen's going to be bonding to and I used that chance to clean the top of the dash and clean the vents that I wouldn't normally be able to get to. And then Archie puts the new primer and sealant on the edges where the windscreen is going to stick to and then pops the new screen straight in place. Having a new windscreen is one of those things, it's like you don't realise you need it until you've got it. Obviously I know this car definitely needed it because it was really badly damaged from the smoke, but it just feels so much fresher driving a car with a fresh windscreen on. And once that's on, he can then fit up all the trims and the windscreen wipers and the rear view mirror and the windscreen is all set. So there is the windscreen sorted, let's get this headliner in. So a quick wipe over on the roof just to remove any leftover soot and anything else which might smell and then I can slide the headliner in through the driver's door. One thing I will say is by trimming these you know, headliners and bits and bobs like that in Alcantara it makes them a little bit thicker which does make fitting them a little bit more of a pain in the arse because there's some parts where you know, the, the gaps which these bits go into are really tight and by adding that extra layer of material does make it much trickier to fit. But once it's in place I can then start fitting the clips to take the weight of it and then start fitting all of the extra trims. So in goes the sun visor clips followed by the sun visors themselves and not forgetting the wiring for those which I nearly did. Part of me was thinking whilst doing this that these sun visors would have looked a lot better in Alcantara as well but I am not that talented. Then finally the sun visor lights and the centre lights go in and the install is done. So there is the new headlining in place and looking sweet. I was having some trouble with this uh, center light just here, but it turns out I was putting it in the wrong way around. And annoyingly, I managed to snap these little um, sun visor clips on both, so I need to replace them already. So that wasn't the best job in the world. But on the whole, I think we can all agree it's looking pretty sweet. Next up is the A-pillar trims. These were probably the most awkward part of these trim sections because it just added that extra little bit of thickness. Like I said, it was really hard to get it down into the dash where it needs to be, but we got there in the end. Next thing to get back in is these kind of C-pillar trims, but I've not trimmed these for one reason. It's because of this little bit here, which the seat belt goes through. The way it's held on is it's like riveted and almost like the plastic rivets are then melted in place. So that means I've got to drill those out and then re-stick it. So I'm going to put it in for now. If it bugs me that it's not suede, even though you can't look, see it when you're looking forwards, then I'll pull it back out. I'll find a way to get that off and reattach it and I will trim it, but only if it does actually bother me. And I'm not sure that it will actually bother me because you don't see it while you're looking forward. You'd only see it really while you're looking backwards, which you rarely do, and when you open the boot. And it's very dark inside the TTs because it's almost a completely black interior and it's got tinted windows. You're hardly going to see it, I don't think. It's important not to forget to put the seatbelt through this trim, but once that's through, I can then put the two bolts in behind the boot carpet, pop the clips into place, move the seal around it, and the seat pillar trims in. Then the final piece, that kind of back of the roof section, which just pops in using my trusty trim hammer. And there we have it, the roof liner is back in and it looks sick. Well, I think it does anyway. I'm sure you guys are going to let me know in the comments section what you think to leave in these trims. And now the interior really can start going back together, but there's one thing that I want to change before I do that, and that is the main carpets. Because these are black, I feel like they could be hiding a lot more than what you think's on there, so I want to change those for new ones, or at least second-hand new ones, and then we can start rebuilding the interior. The great thing with these TTs is they're relatively easy to work on, and also the parts are very, very cheap. So I managed to pick up a new carpet for the car for next to nothing, so I thought I may as well pop that in rather than having the one that was in there when the fire happened. And I have never changed a full carpet in a car before because it's one of my weaknesses, if I'm being honest with you, is interior trims and clips. I haven't quite got the delicacy to, you know, get them back in right. So I feel like this is a great learning project for me. So all you've got to do on the TT is remove all of the trims which kind of surround the carpet and remove the center console. It's not going to come out, but you've just got to take all the bolts out so it's loose and then you can take the carpet out of the car. 
Again, this is one of those handy bits because I needed to change the back section of this centre console anyway because it was ever so slightly melted from the fire, so I had to pretty much do all of this to change that anyway. I couldn't really find a complete guide for doing this on YouTube, so I just ended up keeping on taking bolts out of everywhere I could find until it was loose, and we got there in the end. And once I'd found the last four bolts behind the heater controls, I could then loosen off the front of the centre console, and the back section of the centre console was then free from the car. And then once that was out, I could then pull the carpet out. Honestly, I was surprised how little actually held this in. There was only two clips and just some hooks which it went over. Right, there is one side out. That is the easier side of the car anyway removed. Now I've got to do the driver's side, which is pretty much the same to be honest with you. All I've got to do is take off the footrest and the throttle pedal and this side should come out as well. So to remove the footrest, there was a 10 mil bolt kind of behind the brake pedal and also a Phillips head screw at the top of the footrest and then just one, I believe it was a 10 mil holding the throttle pedal in with a couple of clips at the bottom. Then it was just jiggling the carpet out. It was kind of hooked in behind a metal trim behind the uh, footrest, so once I'd faffed around in there and got that off, I could then take the carpet out of the car. And there is the second piece of carpet out, but what I have noticed is that this section of the sound deadening is slightly damp, so I'm going to give this a clean before I pop the new carpet in, because that you know, it's not going to help towards the smell of the whole car. So yeah, that definitely needs sorting. And then we can start putting the new carpet in and a few other bits. The bonnet release handle I know is a common problem on these and this one is broken. So that needs replacing. So I'm going to probably leave that trim off until I get that. And yeah, the rest of it should all start going back together, really. So once I've got that bit of sound deadening cleaned up in the driver's side, I could then start fitting the carpet on the passenger side while that was drying. Again, this went in so much easier than what I thought. It was just over a few hooks, a couple of clips in place and the carpet was in I could start refitting some trims and then same again on the driver's side once that was in I could then start refitting the footrest which was a bit of a pain to get back in I had to pull some funny shapes to be able to get back into place to do that and then I could get the throttle pedal back on and the carpet was more or less in place and then it was just putting all of the sense console back together which was a bit of a doddle really although this job wasn't particularly hard it was quite time consuming it looks like it took two minutes but it did take a few hours so the interior is now more or less back together how it was before I started taking the carpets out. So it's looking, well, pretty similar really, but uh, it's definitely smelling a hell of a lot better. And also I've used that opportunity to change this piece here, kind of the cup holder section of the center console because that was slightly melted. So it's definitely been worthwhile me doing that. Next, I think I've got to put the new seat belts in. So you'll remember that the seat belt was completely melted in half on the driver's side. So a quick change of that whilst those rear quarter panels were off was super easy and I did the passenger side as well. Once those were in, I could then start taking out the back of the rear seat to make way for the new one. There was two 17 mils and four multi-spline bolts to remove and then it could come out the car. Right, now the back of the car is fully stripped out and we can start putting in those new parts. So I suppose we should go and take a proper look at what I've got. So here we have one half Alcantara, half leather, heated TT interior. Well, I know some of you are gonna be a little bit disappointed because you probably wanted me to get those like RS4 TT RS wing backs, but the price of those are like two and a half grand and the car itself cost me like three and a bit. So like, it's just not worthwhile doing. And I think for that winter daily driver, which I'm gonna be using this for, the half Alcantara will be a little bit warmer and obviously they're heated as well. So I think these are the nicest standard seat option that I could go for. Now these do need a bit of a clean up. They're not perfect, but you know, that's something that I'm well capable of. So that's not so much of a problem at all. 
and also as well we have got matching door cards to go with it but yeah I think these should go pretty nicely the Alcantara will go with the new headlining that's in the car uh, even though it's not exactly the same colour it should still look quite nice and I'm sure there'll be some of you saying oh well they're not TTS seats well yeah they haven't got TTS embroidered in the seat but neither have the ones which are removed out of the car so now the interior can really start going back in and we can start making this car look like a proper car again inside so I'm going to start with the last thing that I took out which is the rear seat back and then reassemble from there until we've got a nearly complete interior so first thing to go back in is the back of the rear seat the new one with that Alcantara center so once I'd squeeze myself into the back of the car with that rear seat I could then start bolting it up as you'd expect because it came straight out of an Audi TT back into one it did just bolt in but I am having a bit of a problem with one of the sides not actually clicking into place I don't know if this is me or an issue with the back of the seat itself but I'm sure I'll have to figure that out at a later date Next in is the subwoofer which goes behind the rear quarter door card on the passenger side. Once that's in, after the seatbelt's been bolted in, I can then put on the rear quarter cards. For these, all you've got to do is plug the tweeter speakers in, thread the seatbelt through and then clip it into place. And now for the final piece to complete the back section of the TT and that's the rear seat bench. This couldn't get much easier, it literally just pushes into place. And now that that's in and at least completed the back of the interior of the TT and it's looking a lot better it's got to be said but we can move on to fitting the front seats. Just quickly before I did that another quick hoover out to make sure that the carpet was as clean as it could be and then I can get that seat in place, plug it in and then tighten down all four corners to make sure that seat ain't going to go anywhere. And then it was time for the driver's seat. I can't believe how quickly we've managed to turn this interior around from being a burnt mess into looking how it does now. It's still not 100%, we're probably 80-90% there, but it's so much better than where it was. How much better is that looking? It's looking like an almost complete interior now. Obviously, I've still got to fix the uh, the bonnet release handle and put these trims on here. And there's a trim around there, which is playing a little bit funny with me. And also, I've got the new door cards to fit. But I now have a car which I can sit in. Let's turn these fans down a bit. And yeah, it feels, it feels nice, it feels nice. And the Alcantara headline, even though you guys can hardly see it on camera, just levels up this interior too. I'm really, really happy with that. Now you guys said that some of these warning lights should disappear if I full lock it a couple of times. So let's give that a try while you're here. Nothing yet. Still there. Okay, I don't think it's going to work, but there may be a reason behind that and I think that might be because I've not got this trim in just here. That's the one where you've got the buttons for the mag ride. There might be a traction control button there. I'm not 100% sure, so maybe once they're plugged in, those lights will go. Then I've obviously got to reset the warning light for the airbag. I've got to put a seatbelt on and take the handbrake off and then we should have a clear dash once I've filled up the washer fluid. But only time will tell. And I want to thank you guys for trying to help me out with that and everything else that you're trying to help me with in the comments section. It really is appreciated. And also I'd like to thank you even more for supporting the channel and watching the videos on the TT. We've seen some great growth in a very short space of time. But that's going to have to be it for this time. Make sure you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're not already and I'll catch you next time.